This is going to be a film study video about Jets rookie Will McDonald IV. He was the 15th overall pick of the 2023 NFL Draft. I'll be honest with you up front, kind of surprised me on draft night with that pick. Not that I didn't think that McDonald has tremendous ability. Look, I thought he should have come out. I thought he should have declared for the 2022 NFL Draft. At that point, I think he had had like 27 or 28 career sacks at Iowa State. He had already showed the the burst athleticism and ability to turn the corner versus tackles. Despite playing somewhat out of position um, at Iowa State in their somewhat unique defense, played a lot of 4-I in Iowa State scheme, which is more of a D-tackle position responsible for B-gap, but his reads were pretty, pretty uh, unique, if you ask me, from some of the things that I thought I saw. They moved him outside on the edge enough so that the NFL, so that the talent was clear and where he would project in the NFL. And the Jets took him at 15 uh, one year after taking Jermaine Johnson at uh, pick 26. Jets are playing McDonald in like that, that four-point stance. Sometimes I'll call it a three-and-a-half. I'll explain that in a minute. They've also got John Franklin Myers out there, who's severely underrated, Carl Lawson. Michael Clemens, Jermaine Johnson, like I said, who they drafted the year before in that in that DN DN edge position. Look, I'm going to show selected plays from the Jets' uh, Week One preseason loss to the Browns, and I think it reflects, you know, positively on McDonald's ability. And that's what I'm trying to do here is present his ability and and show you guys uh, some plays that, that kind of justify the reason why he was picked where he was picked. All right, so. First play is his second possession. It's a first and 10. The Browns quarterback is under center. McDonald's into the boundary here in uh, in that four-point stance at the bottom of the screen. He veers off to quarterback, gets a quarterback hit. To me, just shows his, his burst, acceleration, closing speed, recognition, like I said, out of a four-point stance. He's just gone. Once once the quarterback is, is meshed with the uh, running back and McDonald – doesn't see the football. I pa- hopefully, I paused it here at the right time. You can see the quarterback is between McDonald and the running back directly. Now he saw the ball extended. At this point, he believes that the ball is in the quarterback's gut, which it is. Quarterback's attempting to hide the football. He's gone immediately. Gets to the quarterback. Out of there. You get the end zone angle of the same uh, play. Four-point stance, like I said, real quick. I'll just go over the three and a half. We would call it a a three-and-a-half if you were a little bit lighter on one hand or the other, usually the outside hand. So you'd be slightly lighter on the outside hand. We would call it a a three-and-a-half just to differentiate for our players whether we wanted them to be in uh, a four-point stance or a a three-and-a-half reading. Sometimes we were in a a three-and-a-half if we were angled a little bit more like uh, McDonald is almost tilted some here. But you can see getting back to his play, you know, the tremendous athleticism and burst that there is. Interesting to me, though, same possession. Look, he's not on the field here. Third and five, two plays later. Not on the field. Uh, Bryce Huff, who had three and a half sacks, I think, last year, and Jermaine Johnson, who I think had two and a half, they're on. So this just illustrates to me that there's a lot of young, hungry DNs on this roster. This is preseason game number one in the first quarter, and a 15 overall pick is not out there on a third and five. Now, I don't know. Something may have happened in the previous plays. The Jets may have just had their rotation going. I'm not trying to glean anything into it. My point is there's a lot of talented DNs on this roster, and I think everybody you know should be aware of that. Okay, fourth possession, uh, first and 10. McDonald again in this four-point stance on our right-hand side. A zone read look here. Uh, McDonald steps down and finishes the playoff for a tackle. Uh, running back tries to spin out of it. Could have been a read here, to be honest with you. I'll go over the play here in a moment and, and just give you guys a possible explanation for the H-back's path. So I suspect that there is a misread here. It could be a called give, don't get me wrong. But I think someone misreads it. So this H-back tight end is going to go across the line, and him and the quarterback would both be reading Will McDonald. So were Will McDonald to just run up field, I think the H-back would just loop and the running back would give it. If Jermaine Johnson, if um, McDonald was to run down the line at a severe angle, H back could run out into the flats, which is what he does. Quarterback could keep it, have the option to run, or pass it out to the tight end H back in the flats. As it stands, the quarterback gives it. So he's reading McDonald as being responsible for quarterback. Therefore, he's going to give it to the running back. 
However, the HVAC, whose face mask you can see here, is going to loop outside, and then I'll try to pause it. He actually is even looking back for the quarterback to still have the football. Not sure why he would be doing that if he didn't read it and expect that the possibility existed that he would actually get the football. I'll let you guys watch it one more time in live speed, and then feel free in the comment section to let me know what you think. I'm not sure. It could have been a called give, but I suspect that it might have been a misread by the quarterback. But Will McDonald is playing that kind of like half man technique, uh, where he's half responsible for the tight or for the quarterback and half responsible for the running back. Okay, third and four. I think two plays later, McDonald tries an inside move on the left tackle on a completed pass that I think uh, converted the first down. It looks like a planned stunt to me between him and the D tackle. I think uh, Tanzel Smart. I'll let you guys see it. One more time in live speed, and then I'll kind of break it down a little bit. I do not count this as a as a pass law pass rush loss, and in fact, I think it's dumb to evaluate every pass rush as a win or a loss anyway, because there's planned stunts like I believe this one to be, where Will McDonald is intentionally jutting inside, and then this D tackle, which I think is smart, you can see him lined up in that wide, you know, four eye is going to go step to the guard, which is number 70, and then he'll loop around. So I think this is a planned stunt. I'm not sure that you can glean anything from this in terms of um, Will McDonald IV. But look, in college, he showed the ability to redirect on second or third contact. And what I mean is, against some of the tackles that he was facing in college, or against anybody, he showed the ability. To, they've already made contact here, McDonald and the left tackle. But he showed the ability to redirect after making first or second contact. I think he'll show that in the NFL as well. Now, look, he didn't get the chance to here because the ball, because A, he was running a stunt, so he was somewhat off balance. And then B, the ball was out so quick, whether he redirected or not, he wasn't going to be able to get to the quarterback. Again, I don't think it's appropriate to apply win loss uh, evaluations to every single pass play. All right, fifth play, again, in a true four-point stance here at the bottom of the screen. He's got the tight end and the back to his side. Keep that in mind a little bit later, but there's a lot of things that could be done. The tight end could release outside of him, and they could read him in a zone read scheme like I showed you on the second play, I think. The tight end could go away, and the halfback could release outside of him. He may – they're an even front defense, but he may have some 3-4 outside linebacker type rules where never let somebody cross your face like a running back. In any case, he's reading the tight end, gets hands on, and then tries to use, use his speed around the edge. Ball ends up being intercepted. Uh, I don't think Cedric Tillman ran a, a super great route on this one, but the quarterback throws it directly to the defender. So great play by uh, the Jets' defense. But Will McDonald trying to use his speed, ball is out. Look, there's just no pressure at all from anyone there. Let's get the end zone angle. McDonald, again, in that four-point stance, you can see a lot of weight on the fingers. You can see him splayed out. So clearly a, an absolute four-point stance, not a three-and-a-half like I was trying to describe. Reading the tight end, trying to see what's going on there. And once he tries to get off the, the tackle, it's too late. You know, the, the pocket has already been created. Pretty poor decision to throw the football in uh, in uh, that much traffic or with a, a defender undercutting it, I should say. One more look at it from a McDonald perspective. You know, no uh, huge judgments to make on some of these plays because, like I said, great pocket. And the design of it has the tight end step into him, and he's got to deal with him for a minute. Okay, um, he's the three on kickoff gets credit for the tackle here he's on the jets right hand side for the kickoff team not for us he's clearly on the left hand side of the screen he might be a step behind the other ones twos and threes on the way down i'll kind of pause it here in a moment so you can see what i mean he's not a guy that's gearing down here he's not a safety i don't mean a defensive safety i mean a safety on this scheme he's not a guy that's designed to wait I think he's a little bit behind, but he's going to put a good move on this, um, I think, an offensive lineman and avoid to the ball to make the tackle. So it's a nice play. Shows his athleticism for a DN to, to even be on the field. So if you're not sure about kickoff numbering, you know, the ball is here. So you number from inside out, one, two. He's, he's the three. 
So when I'm talking about him gearing him being a step behind, I'm talking about comparing him to the other ones, twos, and threes. I don't know much about the Jets scheme, but oftentimes your threes are your your guys that are hot, your guys that are just maniacally going right after the football. That may not be the case for their threes, but you can see the nice, pretty nice line that you have between the ones, twos, and threes, and then he's a step behind. But a nice job avoiding to the football. When I say avoiding to the football, you know, here's the football here. He wouldn't want to avoid away from the football, which could potentially open up, you know, a huge seam between him, his blocker, and then the ball carrier. So instead, he avoids to the football, to the side of the football. You want all of your guys to avoid to the side of the football so they create no cutback lanes. Nice play, like I said, shows off his athleticism, if you ask me. Being a number 15 pick and then playing out there on kickoff is pretty cool. Okay, third quarter, going to be a run play. He's down here in his true four-point stance. You can kind of see him a, a little bit, but not great. I mean, I mean, look, would, do we not want to see him get pinned down by a wide receiver? Uh, of course we don't want to see him get pinned down by a wide receiver. I mean, but... He has a one to, or two eye inside of him. So this is Will McDonald, just to recap. So his D tackle is in the A gap. That's an A gap responsible uh, D tackle. So A gap. And then B gap between the guard and the tackle. Will McDonald can't very well take his helmet and line up head up on number 80. It would create a two gap bubble or a huge gap if he was to line up head up on this wide receiver. It would create a huge natural, almost a two gap bubble between them. So in the Jets scheme, this is what they do. They line up with wide defensive ends, four point stances, three and a half, whatever you want to call it sometimes. He's getting cracked. Do we want to see him play it? He's getting pinned down. Do we want to see him play it a little better? Yeah. But really the the larger problem for me is the lack of formation recognition by the Jets guys on offense or guys on defense. Not recognizing here's the side where you could get a pin down or a crack. You're not there's no receiver here to pin down on this defensive end. I'm not even sure who that is, but point being, a little bit better formation recognition. But this is the jet scheme. This is what they want. They they want to be able to get out get out on the edge and have their inside linebackers run. They're fast. They're, they're starters or you know, they're super fast. Uh as a Ravens fan, I watched them a lot early last season, of course, watched them in week one, and then paid attention to them because I'm a huge Ahmad Gardner fan. I mean, who isn't? So this is their scheme, this is what they want. But you know, are there times where I think that you could widen that guy up a little bit, move the uh, three technique to this side, because now you've got a crack threat here? Yeah, of course. The the Browns are taking advantage of them because they know they're going to put the three technique to the tight end because they're an even front defense. They're very rarely going to slide down into a, a slid 50 or what some people would call, you know, a 3-4 look, an under look. So crack pin down scheme against an even front team to the weak side is a good call. Because you're getting the one technique, and now the defensive end is kind of locked in, can't really widen up. All right, very next play. Probably his most physically impressive play. Third and two, going to be a spin move. Um, it's not just impressive because of the the physical nature of the move, the, the speed at which he moves and makes the spin and stays under great body control and redirects directly at the quarterback. But I think it's impressive also because, and I mentioned this earlier, he has the tight end and the running back to his side. So there's all kinds of combinations about what he could get. He could get the tight end releasing out and the running back crossing the quarterback's face where he's the read man, and they're trying to decipher what he's going to do, they being the quarterback. He could also get the tight end you know, trying to reach him and the back going out here and a little short toss, same side toss, meaning a toss to the same side where the running back lines up. He could get the opposite of what I drew up a moment ago, tight end inside release, back to the flats, and he may have some rule about not letting people cross his face, but that's typically an odd front thing for an outside linebacker. Uh, also, the Jets are playing man here, so that removes some of the possible responsibility for Will McDonald in terms of, hey, don't let a, don't let a running back cross your face. Run with him, chip him, whatever you know terminology you want to use. The Jets are playing man. So I think that removes him from some of the responsibility here. And I'll give the end zone angle of this too. Just shows his athleticism and explosiveness and, and you know why the Jets picked him at pick 15. They get a stop here. End zone angle, same play. Get an idea of what I mean when I say tight end, running back, same side. Look how wide that running back is lined up. Third and two, so you got a you know, pre, 
pre-snap indicator, it's probably not going to be crossing the quarterback's face and a mesh with the quarterback for zone read when you got a running back who's lined up so wide. Look, the Jets have a lot of talent on defense, a ton. I love their scheme, how they let those guys up front attack. I think they caused problems for a lot of teams last year with this, with these wide defensive ends. And the fact that they have a lot of them, besides, besides having a lot of talent all over the defense, it's unfortunate that Chuck Clark is, is out for the year. Terrible break for him and for the Jets. Provided some more versatility, toughness, very smart uh, defender. They got a great scheme. It's very concrete. I don't think they deviate from their scheme a whole lot. Adding Will McDonald just adds another depth piece at the, at the D-line position, which is already crazy deep with some of the guys that I mentioned earlier. Um, personally, would I have advocated, if I were a Jets fan, for drafting Will McDonald at 15? No, I would not have. And on draft night, I even said to guys, I was like, I'm not a huge fan of that pick, not because I don't like the player, just because I didn't think it fit the Jets I didn't think that was an area of need, a position of need, with all the defensive talent they have at the D-line position, D-tackle and D-end. I love what they're doing, and I think Will McDonald looks like he's going to fit into the scheme very well, even though in college um, he was not utilized out on the edge as much. Over the course of his career, will you find reps and highlights of him out there? Of course you will. You'll find him apexed out, lined up pretty wide, and blitzing like off the edge of strong safety. Generally, however, he was lined up in a four-eye or head up on a tackle, essentially a, a, de- a three-four defensive tackle position, even though Iowa State didn't play a three-four. They really played like a, a three-two-six. But in any case, you guys let me know what you think of the video. Um, if you appreciated the video and you think other Jets fans would enjoy this content, this kind of film study look at Will McDonald, Please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it somewhere out on social media to help this content get more reach.